you know, orientation, um, open house is that time when you get to come in the building, you're excited, you get to see everybody again, go down, meet your teachers, drop off stuff, fill out paperwork, all that. Well, we're trying to recreate that in a virtual sense because we know how important it is that we start the year off right and you have that first connection with staff. So we're excited about that. You will be getting information in the newsletter this week and first thing next Monday morning and even a little video of how to navigate and move through that system. So we're, we're excited to have that for you guys. Um, the digital handbook went out last week. We hope between that and this tonight, we'll get all your questions answered. We're gonna work hard um, on that. As far as communication goes, um, your teachers, just like if we were face-to-face, -face, are gonna send out weekly communication, so you'll have that, um, that touch point with your teachers. The other thing is the weekly reminders. We have worked so hard to make sure that we pack that weekly reminders with that information, that that is your number one place to go to get information besides our website. And so it's really important that you make sure that you are receiving those. If for some reason you are not receiving those, please let the front office know so we can make sure we get you in on that list. That's really important to us. And then um, you'll hear more about devices um, later, but Chromebook pickup will definitely be Wednesday and Thursday. All right. Um, device pickup for Chromebooks will definitely be Wednesday and Thursday, but you will hear more about that as we go through. So now we're going to hand it over to our coordinators, and I do believe Zakia is first. I might have to unmute her. Hold on. Sorry about that. I'll fix it. Christy, can you get to her before I do? Oh, I got it. You got it? I think so. Okay, Yeah, you should be good now. <laughs> so that's the downside of mute all. <laughs> exactly. All right. Again, I'm Zakia Funches, and I'm the data coordinator. And I'm just going to take a few moments to go over data and assessments um, that we um, both administer here, in, here at GLOBE, as well as what we do with the data that is collected. So um, coming up very soon, we will be administering MAP. That's the Measures of Academic Progress. It's an online adaptive assessment that is administered three times a year. So fall, winter, and spring. K and first grade students are assessed in the areas of reading and math, and second through eighth graders are assessed in reading, math, and language usage. Fontes and Pinnell is a benchmark assessment that's used to identify the instructional and independent reading levels of each student. We call it FMP. FMP assessments are also administered three times a year, the fall, the winter, and the spring. Students also take the STAMP test. That's the standards-based measurement of proficiency. It's also an online adaptive language proficiency test, excuse me. Um, it's a, it assesses students in the area of reading, writing, listening, and speaking in their respective target languages. So they take it in French if they're on the French track, Mandarin on the Mandarin track, and Spanish on the Spanish track. This test is administered for students in second through eighth grade. The Georgia Milestones Assessment System is a statewide comprehensive test administered in grades three through high school. GMAS measures how well students have learned the skills outlined in the state content standards. GMAS tests are also given in English language arts, math, science, and social studies. It is administered in the spring, and I think the state has not um, made any indication on whether or not that will be waived this year like it was this past school year. There are also other various formative and summative assessments that teachers use in each core content area. A few examples of those are exit tickets, published writings, pre and post tests, and your basic quizzes and tests. What do we do with the data that we collect? The teachers use this data to drive their instructional decisions. We use it for planning 
teachers ask themselves, what are some of the best teaching strategies that will work given where my students are currently performing? Do I need to reteach a skill first before introducing an upcoming skill that's in the next unit? They also use this data for grouping of students. Which students can I partner together as language partners? Who can I group together for book clubs? We also use this data to determine what students need additional support. Who needs extra support layered on top of the core instruction? And that can be whether to extend beyond the current content or to remediate those who aren't quite meeting benchmark. So these are just some of the things um, and some of the assessments that we use here, as well as some of the ways that we use the data that's collected. I will be available and have open office hours during orientation. So feel free to click on my meet link during those times and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Again, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. All right, Lisa Dibble is up next. One second, Lisa, let me fix it for you. Hit the wrong button when I was doing it before. Okay. Hey everyone, I am Lisa Dibble. I am the curriculum coordinator, as I said before, and I work with the teachers on the English side. Um, let me welcome you all. I know this is gonna be a very different school year, but I can assure you that you have the best group of teachers of um, any other people in the whole state of Georgia, if not the whole country. So I feel that you guys are all in great hands. Um, we've already been doing a lot of work getting ready for you. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over some of the things that we do and how they are going to be done virtually now. Um, your kids will still have morning meetings every morning. Um, they're going to be asynchronous or recorded lessons for the mini lesson, which you might have heard your child talking about. And those will be in reading and writing workshop as well as math. Um, your kids are going to be working in small groups, um, just like they would have been working in the classroom, either conferencing with their teacher or working in a small group with their teacher to help check for understanding, to make sure that students understand the cons, and to make sure that the students understand the concepts. Um, they still will be having choice of what they read. They will also have um, chances as they get closer to the end of the year for second and third to participate in book clubs where they'll be able to be in breakout rooms and work with a small group of students all reading the same book. Um, we're still gonna be doing fluency practice where we're gonna be working on reading more smoothly and reading with expression. Um, still in first and second, especially, we're still gonna be doing systematic explicit phonics for your students. And your child will have an opportunity, opportunity to um, hear their teacher read aloud every day, probably more like in a recorded setting, but there'll still be a read aloud. Um, so, Again, I too will be at the orientation and have my very own link. So if you have more questions about the curriculum or what things will look like, um, please don't hesitate to pop in or to send me an email. Thank you. Hi, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm the language coordinator, Sandra Daniel. And I wanted to give you guys um, just the assurance that Distance learning is globe learning. Our expectations for our program have not changed. You will still have the teacher that will be speaking to the students in 100% target language. So they, our language teachers will not be speaking English. Um, and our expectations for our students are the same as well. So students in first grade will be expected to respond back in the target language after 50 days. And of course, second graders and up, you know, first day you're in there with the teacher, you're, you're speaking in the language. Um, and that, that's something that's so important for us um, 
because that's what makes us so unique and special. So in first through third grade, we're moving on from the sight words. Um, in kindergarten, we're working on a lot of recognizing single words um, in our reading. First grade and up, we're working on recognizing sentences. So um, I just kind of put one of um, the morning messages from one of our teachers up there. Um, you're able to kind of see that students are able to pick out certain words that they might be able to recognize. Um, and this is really important that this is only in the target language so that we get our students accustomed to reading and looking for what they know and seeing what they understand. Um, we don't recommend uh, translation because we don't want to have the base of students to be English where they're having to think in English, translate to the language, think again in English and translate again to the language. That's a lot of steps. We want our students to be thinking in the language. So that's one of the biggest things that you're going to notice moving into the virtual learning that, that you're gonna see that. It'll be like going into another world. Um, so that's, that's really important. With that said, we have the most amazing teachers. Um, your teachers are highly specialized in language learning and language acquisition. They're going to be modeling on camera. They're going to be acting things out. We're going to be using visuals and high frequency vocabulary. So Ms. Dibble mentioned that the first few weeks we're going through the first six weeks of school. Teachers will be walking students through step by step what it looks like to turn in assignments, what it looks like to find assignments. What we'll also be looking at is morning meeting, building that community where students feel safe to talk in the language and get to know each other. Um, lastly, really important that teachers will always be sending out an email at the, or some kind of communication, maybe a blog, about what is going on in class so you know what to expect in English. On the next page, I kind of wanted to give you an idea of what that might look like. So um, on the next page, we have a mini lesson and I think if we click it, it might work. Um, so how teachers are doing this is we're recording ahead of time, students can replay, play, practice, and rewind. And this is something that you don't get to do in the regular classroom. This is kind of a, an advantage of this distance learning. So if we kind of scroll through, and it works um, like um, pulling across, so you can see the modeling of the teacher. Yes. So teachers are walking students through step by step, how to use the strategy, how to do the addition. Um, and of course, you can pause, you can replay. Um, and that's something that'll be really helpful for students as we go through that with those many lessons. As Ms. Dibble mentioned, you'll have the opportunity to also work with a student in a small group. So students get that extra language practice. And if you guys have any other questions, I'm here on orientation day and you can just pop in my office. So is it done? All right, good afternoon again, everyone. Um, before I get started, I have a favor to ask and that is just sit back and listen. There is a lot of activity in the chat and we will not be answering any additional questions that you put in the chat box. And we're gonna also ask you to wait until the end. So if your question was not answered, then you can put it in there and we'll follow up with you or send it out in um, school communications. But for now, just please, please, please sit back and listen so that you don't miss anything. Um, again, my name is Katia Blunt, and I am the head of school um, for Lower Campus, beginning my second year. And I first want to echo what Sandra and Zakia and Lisa said about our amazing teachers. 
they have been working extremely hard all day, every day to prepare for this school year. And I really, really hope that you know that your students are in the best hands that we have. Um, so I'm gonna begin by talking about devices. And this is extremely important information, but just know it is different for first grade than it is for second and third. So my first grade families, listen up. I need you to know that all first grade students will use an Apple iPad for distance learning. We do not have any other options for first grade students. They must use an iPad. Now, we were very, very fortunate to be able to order a brand spanking new iPad for every kindergarten and first grade student. So you are welcome to come to the school to check out an iPad for use with distance learning. If you do that, then you must purchase insurance. This slide actually says tomorrow, um, but the deadline is actually today. I meant to change that. Um, so you have just until tonight, if you haven't already, and many of you have already purchased insurance, so thank you. Um, but you see the website right there. It is $33. It's a one-time fee. Now, please hear me when I say, for the iPads only, pickup has been delayed. It is a very, very long process to roll out 288 iPads, and we just cannot get them um, done in time to pick up this week. We are aiming for Monday or Tuesday. Those of you that purchased insurance prior to about an hour ago should have received an email from me with that information saying, I'm confirming that I have your insurance. However, stay tuned. You will receive an email from me. So it won't be a Facebook post. It won't be a, um, a, it written in the sky using an airplane. It won't be any other way, but an email from me, Katia Blunt, that says when the iPads are ready for pickup. Um, when we come back to school, or I should say if, if and when we come back to school, then the iPads will remain at school. They will no longer be yours to use at home. Now, you don't have to pay the insurance. You don't have to come pick up one of our iPads. Families are welcome to use their own. It can be any model or size of an iPad. It can be the, um, it can be the iPad mini, the regular size iPad, which is what we're going to have and the or the um, ipad pro the bigger one um, the list of apps if you do use a home ipad that will be shared with you soon but they'll, they're going to all be free apps and they're all going to be apps that encourage engagement and interaction and some examples are google classroom flipgrid brain pop jr and seesaw um, the ipad that you will check out from the school will have an extremely tough case to go with it with the kickstand so you don't have to buy your own case if you're using one of ours that's part of our um, hold up not all of it but part of a part of it is securing those cases that are that are best for use with little hands um, next slide please devices for second and third grade students all second and third grade students will use it can either be a desktop computer, Mac or PC, a laptop computer, Mac or P port PC, or a Chromebook. So if you already have one of those at home, then you can definitely use that with your second and third grader. However, families are welcome to um, come to the school to check out a Chromebook, just like we did in the spring. And again, um, insurance must be purchased by today and um, Chromebook insurance is only $20. Um, if you are buying insurance, you do not have to add the serial number. I am adding that in um, on the back end, just purchase it. Um, so pick up for Chromebooks only will be um, tomorrow or Thursday between 9 a.m. and 2 p.m. at Lower Campus. Um, I will not be there tomorrow. Miss Kat, who you'll hear from in a minute, will take care of pickups on uh, for tomorrow, and I will be there on Thursday, but you're in good hands no matter what admin you deal with. 
Um, we will not be able to give you a Chromebook though if you're not showing up on our Chromebook insurance list. Um, and that, that populates overnight every night. So by the time Kat gets to campus tomorrow morning, she will be able to log in to our account at School Device Coverage and be able to see every family that, um, that was able to purchase insurance. If you don't purchase it in advance, then Miss Kat can watch you log on to the website and do it then, but we can't allow you to take that Chromebook um, out of the building until that's done. Um, the Chromebook will not come with a case. You don't have to put a case on it, but you're welcome to purchase your own case and it will not come with um, headphones or a mouse. Um, and just like the iPads, if and when we come back to school, then we will, um, we will have the Chromebooks come back with us so that we can um, um, have those ready for school instruction. All right, next slide. I wanted to go over some key terms that you might hear with regards to distance learning. And the first one that we use is asynchronous. So that's just any kind of interactions that happen without real time interaction. So students are engaging in class materials and they complete work at their own pace, typically within a given time frame but we also allow you to kind of have that entire day to make that asynchronous work with your family schedule. Um, when age slash grade appropriate, discussion boards and interactive platforms are used to drive peer-to-peer -peer engagement. And then the next key term is synchronous, which means that class interactions happen in real time and at the same time. So as I go on to schedules, I want you to keep in mind those asynchronous times and synchronous times. All right, so let's first look at the weekly schedule. So as you know, many of you out, he, out there, this is not your first year at GLOBE, but we do, the way that our school works, we do have several new families to first, second, and third grades. Um, and so if you're one of those new families, then you were assigned your language track. If you were second or third grade, then your child had to pass the stamp assessment to get in. But perhaps you're coming in as a, as a um, new first grader and then you were assigned a language track based on what we had available. Language tracks will not change. So please, 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 all of you out there already know what language track you're in. Please save your fingers some exercise and do not email us about changing language tracks. Now, your child this year was also assigned to a homeroom, either homeroom one or homeroom two. These were carefully balanced for gender, race and, race and ethnicity, their chronological age, instructional services, et cetera. There is a lot of work that goes into creating the home rooms. I need everyone to stop what you're doing right now. I can't see you all, but please look at me and please hear me when I say, homeroom assignments will not be changed for any reason. And I'll say it again, homeroom assignments, and they're gonna be re released this coming Friday, they will not be changed for any reason. I am begging you and pleading with you, don't even ask. The answer is going to be no. And some of you might say, oh, that's fine, Miss Blunt. I'm just gonna go ahead and ask Christy instead. Well, guess what? She's gonna say no too. We just can't do it. Um, they are set, thank you, Christy, for shaking your head. They are set and they will not be changed. I love all of you. We've got board members out there, we've got what do they call them, the OGers, the original Globers out there. We have everybody. I don't even care if maybe one of you is like, your second cousin is Oprah Winfrey. Fantastic, but it's not going to be changed. All right? All right. I can only see most Mr. Bo Shears, and he's laughing at me, so I hope everybody else is laughing at me too. <laughs> All right. Um, and again, you will get an email from your child's homeroom teacher this Friday. That is how you will know who is your homeroom teacher. Now, 
here's an example. Let's just say that you were um, Stacy Renee Schmidt. That is not funny. I see you in the chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's say that you are in second grade in the uh, on the French track. If you are on, if you're in homeroom number one, that means you're going to be with Miss Holmes. Let's just say, and your child would have English on Monday, language on Tuesday. We're all going to be. Um, self-directed learning or independent learning on Wednesday, and then back to English on Thursday and language on Friday. So it very much mimics the every other day like we do when we're face-to-face. -face. Again, Wednesdays will be independent learning for all. Teachers are planning all day with, their, with, with all of lower campus and with their partner teachers and with their language teachers and with Lisa and Sandra and Takia. Um, so that's why we wanted that day to have them be able to plan. All right, next slide. A glimpse at the daily schedule. This slide is just for first graders. And let me explain the color coding. And it goes back to that asynchronous and synchronous instruction. So the two times where you see all yellow, that's going to be whole group um, and with the teacher. So there will be a whole group, the whole class, the whole class of 24, just the, just the one homeroom, will begin each day with the morning meeting. And then they go straight into two um, blocks back to back. Within the literacy block, within the math block, and at the end of the day, in that reading or language work, language work block, your child will be live with the teacher between 20 and 30 minutes, but the rest of that time will be that asynchronous work. The rest of the work, thank you, Mr. Boshears, for nodding your head. I can only see you, but it helps to know that I'm explaining this correctly. So just keep going, okay? Thank you. Um, and within, let's say between 8.25 and 10.15, your child will only be with their teacher live for 20 to 30 minutes. And then that way, your child can get the rest of their work done whatever time of day that works best for them. It's all that asynchronous work. The same thing will happen between 10.20 and 11.25, and then between 1.30 and 2.25 for first grade. Your teachers are going to work hard to have those small group times be consistent for your child. The groups are gonna be based on data that we get from some of those assessments that Sakia and Lisa and Sandra mentioned. And they will work with you one-on-one -on -one if your small group time doesn't work. Um, but just know it will be sometime within those time frames. Quick word about connections. For first grade, connections, they will be split in half. And so we had to split the time in half. They're gonna go to connections live every day at either 12.30 to 12.55 or 1 to 1.25. So you'll, go, you'll get more information about the schedule, but here is your first glimpse for first grade. All right, Christy, second grade, please. You'll see that it looks somewhat similar, um, where you have a mixture of asynchronous, meaning on their own during their own time, and synchronous. So their synchronous times, everyone is on for morning meeting, um, from 8 to 8.20, and then their connections block is between 9.35 and 10.30, and then everyone, all 24 kids, will be on for a closing circle at the end of the day. And then your child will be live with their teacher once during their math block, once during the reading workshop or language block, and then once again for writing workshop. Um, again, you're able to see that even though the block is longer, they're going to have their one small group time that they're required to join their teacher in that small group. And then last, we have third grade. Very, very similar. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but they begin their day with their morning meeting and going directly into connections. And we've kept our connections time the same as when it is face-to-face. -face. So let's say that we went back to school face-to-face -face and then went into distance learning. The third graders are used to, well, would have been used to 
going to their classrooms for morning meeting and then going straight to connections. Um, and you'll see that they are also ending their day with the closing circle. All right. Um, and I am now going to turn it over to Ms. Cap. All right. Hi. Um, I am Mrs. Cat, the interim assistant head of school at Lower Campus. I don't know if people joined after we did our introductions. Um, I'm just going to go through the last few slides, and this one's about norms and expectations and how you might be able to support your students at home. Um, I think there were a lot of people that asked about appropriate dress and whether or not a uniform was required. We are not requiring that you wear um, or that your child wear their uniform, um, but you can definitely talk with them about what's appropriate to wear on video with, with other children. Um, we encourage you to create a comfortable workspace for each student um, and make sure their supplies are nearby, have their Chromebook or iPad charged, um, leave food and drink in the kitchen um, so that hopefully we don't just, they don't accidentally spill it on their technology. <laughs> um, minimize distractions and um, especially try not to have toys um, around that may distract them from their learning. Um, unless the teacher, of course, is, has asked them to bring it. Um, read your weekly emails from the teachers and also those weekly emails from um, the Globe Academy that go out school-wide um, to stay informed about what's going on in your child's class and um, for the school overall. All right. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> All right, we had a few questions about grading and how feedback would be given. Um, and Zakia and Katia and Lisa and Sandra have kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, but our we will be grading basically like we do in the regular school year. Um, we have standards-based progress reports that go out four times a year, and the first one will go out um, in mid-October. And your the teachers will be giving um, feedback on your child's assignments in Google Classroom via comments on an actual assignment, or they may post in Google Classroom a material that your child doesn't actually turn in in Google Classroom, but it interacts through another platform like Seesaw or Flipgrid, um, and the teacher may actually provide the feedback through that platform. All right. You can go to the next slide, Christy. Okay, school supplies for distance learning. Um, so we heard the feedback that, yeah, we're, we're doing it different, so let's change this up a little bit. So our teachers provided us with a list of exactly what they think your child needs to start off at home. Um, I think you'll notice that a lot of this is similar to what they were asking if you were coming into school. So um, Hopefully, we don't know how long we're going to be in this distance learning environment, but I hope that you have lots of these supplies left um, and that you can bring them back into school when we start. Um, I know there were some questions like, why would they need the four folders or why would they need a red folder and a blue folder? Um, that is a system and a routine that the teacher has set up in the classroom to help them with their readers and writers workshop and to organize themselves and they will be using those systems when they come into the classroom so it helps them at home and when we transition back into the building um and these are available they've been available in the weekly newsletter i think last week and we'll keep posting them in the weekly newsletter for you um, i don't believe they've been updated on the website yet and this is also going out um, these slide decks are also going out to you guys all right, Christy, thank you. Okay, so um, support services um, that your child may need while we are in distance learning. Um, special education, gifted, ESOL, speech, EIP, and counseling services will all be available in distance learning as they are when we're in the building. 
Um, just so you know, there's a lot of acronyms and education speak. Um, ESOL is English for Speakers of Other Languages, and EIP is Early Intervention Program. Um, in the distance learning atmosphere, they will be providing those supports as we would be in the regular school building. Um, if your child receives support services, you'll be contacted directly with information um, about how that support's gonna be provided um, and their schedule or at what time um, directly from them. Um, for counseling services specifically, I skipped a line. <laughs> Um, I'll go ahead though and say the counseling services. If any of your children have social emotional needs at all, um, really if you need help with anything that you feel that you can't go to the teacher with or that you don't feel comfortable coming to Katia or myself with, you can always go to um, our school counselor, Ashley Wittacek, and she will be happy um, to help. Um, with that. <laughs> I see Sony said, what if I have social, social emotional needs? She helps the staff out a lot <laughs> um, as well. So we are going to be following guidelines from the State Department of Education and the federal guidelines as some of these programs are federal programs regarding student supports. Um, DeKalb is just back in session this week, and so we don't have some of this guidance yet. So you will be updated on this as we are. All right, attendance. Um, if you were experienced distance learning last spring, you know that we did not really take a, attendance. We will be taking attendance this time as this is, we are attempting to do real school. Um, they will be taking attendance during the small group instruction periods each Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. If your child is sick, you will need to send a note to that day's teacher. So if your, te your child is in Mandarin that day, you send the email to the Mandarin teacher, even if it's not their homeroom teacher. Um, so either their English or language teacher, depending on who is teaching them that day to let them know that your child is sick and cannot attend, okay? Um, this part is really important. Please do not ask them to temporarily reschedule your child's small group time. Um, you will be able to access, you can ask them what they were working on and we will help with that, but they're not gonna reschedule the small group for your child. We say temporarily there because um, if your child is in a small group and that is consistently not working for your family, um, we do ask that you reach out to the teacher and we will try to work with you on um, getting that change to work for your family. Um, if your child does not attend class and you have not informed the teacher, they will be marked absent and you will need to send in an excuse. Um, some of you had questions about the uh, conference days in the fall, and I don't remember, I think there's another one on election day, there's a virtual learning day. On those days, students will be working independently like they are on Wednesdays, um, and teachers will be working those days. All right, thank you. Um, Kat and Katia, I really appreciate it. Um, this next slide is a, um, a plug that the PTCC is doing for our community. Um, Flori Glessman, who is a parent here at GLOBE, has offered her, um, volunteered her services to really do a section on how to um, have a successful virtual learning experience in your home and how to set that up for your children. So I encourage you all to, um, register for that. It is Thursday, August 13th at 8.30. And I know it's really small down there on how to register, but it will be um, in the weekly reminders tomorrow. So look for that. I encourage you um, to attend that. And Flory does a great presentation as well. So we're looking forward to seeing that. Um, and the last thing is we, um, we, we're getting you out of here a little bit early tonight. 
Um, if anybody has any burning questions that didn't get answered um, tonight or through our handbook or anything like that, please go ahead and just put it in the chat box because we will be compiling those and either reaching out directly to parents for answers or putting them in a, a question document. So we'll have all that. But I wanna say thank you to the leadership team um, for putting on this presentation. You did a great job. And guys, we cannot wait to see your children. We miss them so much. We are really looking forward to welcoming them back into the virtual classroom and making connections and start getting those classes um, going. So thank you for coming tonight. We can't wait to see you. We'll see you Monday at orientation. I hope everyone has a great night and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.